Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Nathan and today with all the Matthew Kachuk rumors swirling, I asked you guys a question on the community post to give me your best mock trades and most realistic deals in a Matthew Kachuk trade with a bunch of teams listed and a bunch of different trades. We'll see what you guys have to offer. But what are the best mock trades out there and what could be the most realistic returns in a Matthew Kachuk deal? Watch till the end for the full trade rumors and all of the mock trades. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you are new. 50% of you guys aren't subscribed, so if you like comments, and trade rumor content this channel is the place to be now of course i go on the community post ask you guys to give your most realistic map you could chuck mock trades and over 150 of you guys end up answering obviously we can't get to every single one but today we will be sharing the most realistic and the most interesting with you guys now the first mock trade we have here comes from slingshot 28 who i am assuming wants to see matthew kachuk go to the st louis blues but their mock trade is to st louis matthew kachuk and in exchange, a pretty interesting trade package. Two Calgary, Jordan Cairo, Tori Krug, Marco Scandella as a cap dump, which does make sense, and a first round pick in the 2023 NHL draft. The Blues will have to make some other moves to clear up cap space, but I think this is a fair trade. Now, I think honestly, Slingshot, I feel like if you get rid of Krug, Cairo, and Scandella, you might not need to clear any other massive contracts unless Tarasenko is a must to make the cap work. But I do think this is honestly a pretty pretty close to trade, trade what we could see, especially for the Flames, but they do still want to compete while losing players like Matthew Kuchuk and Johnny Goudreau. Getting a player like Jordan Cairo back is a must for them, and a player like Tori Krug as well would be a humongous for that team. Marco Scandella, I think, is also nice, even though I feel like he's still a little bit overpaid, and then you get a first-round pick in the 2023 NHL draft. To me, especially if you get Cairo at a first, those are the two assets you really need if you're a Calgary, but you also get a top four offensive D-man in Tory Krug, and even though I think you would need some defense there, Marco Scandella can provide that. So overall, if we put that into the realistic meter, I would give that like an 8 point, I don't, 8 point 5 out of 10 or something. I really do like what this deal provides, and again, for the Flames, I think it's a pretty realistic ask, especially Kyrou in that first, being the two main assets. But going on to the second mod trade here that I wanted to mention, this one from Ali, who goes with a Nashville Predators trade offer, so we'll see what this this one provides. Going on to the trade offer itself, Nashville receives Matthew Kachuk and a 2024 fourth round pick. In exchange, the Calgary Flames will get center Mikel Granlin, Dante Fabro, Zachary Leheru, and a 2023 first round pick. Now, this one's interesting as well because we were talking about Nashville being a huge, huge contender in the Matthew Kachuk sweepstakes. And to me, I think they had some of the best assets available for the Flames to go after. Now, it's definitely not as good as that last offer for the Blues but if they don't offer that offer, I mean, I feel like Nashville is a team that could be pretty sneaky in these negotiations and bring a lot. And I think for the Flames, this is a much better package if they're wanting to get maybe more future assets or future guys in exchange for Matthew Kachuk, which we'll see what they end up going for. We'll see what their process is, but it does feel like for the Calgary, there is a chance that that is the case with Dante Fabro being still having a promising young defenseman, even if his results have been kind of uh, skewy over over these last couple of years. Zachary Laharu is a great center forward prospect, and then you get a 2023 first round pick, which in my opinion, I'd much rather have Nashville's first round pick than St. Louis's first round pick. And you also get Mikel Granlin, who I think is great, but I also do think there's a little bit of a fit issue there. I mean, he's played center a lot. He can play wing, of course, but uh, he's a player that if he if he does still want to be that center uh, that center position, I guess would be that second line center, but you'd have a center group of Lindholm, uh, 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 Granlin, and... and on top of that backland, which would be amazing, but might be a little bit much in terms of the fit for Calgary. They might want to go for a winger from the National Predators instead. To me, I think what maybe could happen is maybe you supplement Mikhail Granlin for maybe Elliot Tolvanen, and then maybe you have another prospect on top of that, maybe maybe like a Luke Prokop or, or some other defensive prospect on top of it. But we'll see what happens. I think for the Preds, they got a lot of options and a lot of assets to work with. 
So if we go with this trade, we put it into the realistic meter. I give it like a seven out of 10. Now this one is interesting. I was hoping we would get a three-way trade and Declan comes through. And when it comes to Declan's trade offer, it goes as follows. The New York Islanders receive Vladimir Tarasenko. The St. Louis Blues receive Matthew Kachuk. And the Flames receive the Islanders first round pick, the Blues first round pick, and Jordan Cairo. Some variation of this. I don't know much about the Blues. So you're going to just this as long as Islanders get Tarasenko and Blues get Kachuk. So this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. The Islanders receive their top six player that they, we've heard a lot about Tarasenko wanting, or uh, the Islanders wanting to go after Tarasenko and wanting to get that deal done. They get their guy. The Blues get their guy. And personally for me, I think this is kind of interesting because I feel like for the Islanders, you do give up a first round pick for Tarasenko, which could be the price. We could be the price, but also I do feel like they might not have to give up as much to make the deal happen on their side of things. For the Blues, though, you give up a first round pick in Cairo, and I think that's the baseline. You might have to give up more than that, potentially. But I could see a situation where maybe St. Louis gives another player to the Islanders if they're able to make the cap space work. Let's say for the Blues, maybe they get all the Tarasenko cap off the books, and maybe you give another player player back to them, maybe like an Ivan Barbashev to make that happen, make that full cap hit go to New York, even though there would be a lot of trouble having to bring it back. As for the Flames, I feel like getting two first round picks in Cairo would be fantastic, but I also feel like for them, it might be a little bit of an issue, but I, I just feel like, honestly, for the Flames, to be able to get two first round picks, to be able to get Cairo, it makes a lot of sense for them, but there might have to be some salary that goes back, whether it be for the Islanders or for the Blues, that might make it a little bit troublesome, but I do love the idea of the Islanders, Blues, and Flames combining for a three-way deal. I think there's something absolutely there. So in terms of the realistic meter, I'd give it a six out of 10 for right now, but honestly, I feel like if you just make slight adjustments, it could be way more realistic and honestly, could be a deal that actually happens. Now, this one's also pretty interesting from Ban Boy with a great Snorlax profile picture with a San Jose Sharks Matthew Goodchuck fits. Now, Percy for me, I feel like the fit is weird, but we'll see what the trade offer is because I feel like with San Jose they're they're obviously tanking for Bedard so going on to the actual trade itself to San Jose could chuck and a 2023 second round pick in exchange the Calgary Flames gets Kevin LeBanc Eric Carlson salary retained Mario Ferraro Ryan Merkley and a 2023 first round pick potentially Bedard so very valuable I mean if I'm Calgary if I'm going to trade anybody in the division that's the type of of deal I might end up making but it's interesting because I feel like getting for the Sharks could chuck in the second round pick might just salvage their offseason it's been really weird and really rough so far but hey if, if they if they get rid of Burns just so they can bring Matthew could chuck in that would be insane and also I do feel like the trade package going back to Calgary is pretty sizable if Kevin LeBanc rebounds it could be great Eric Carlson has proved a lot more these last this last year or so Mario Ferraro is underrated Brian Merkley could be solid on offense and a 2023 first round pick a lot more quantity and a lot less quality, but still a lot of good options for the Flames. In terms of the realistic meter, I give it like a 4 out of 10 just because I don't feel like San Jose will be a team to make it happen, but if it does happen, I feel like that trade package would be pretty likely. Now going on to another team here, this time from Warren CF, who proposes a Florida Panthers Matthew Kachuk trade, and we saw, of course, in the last video how Florida is on Matthew Kachuk's preferred to be traded to list, and it would make a lot of sense if the Florida Panthers are able to get a deal done. As for Warren's trade offer. He says Florida gets Kachuk and a fifth round pick, and Calgary gets Horquist, Montour, Samuskevich, Evan Nas, Alexi Hepaniemi, a 2025 first and a 2023 second. And as for the explanation, Horquist and Montour are there mostly for salary, but can also provide you with okay play. The Panthers would have to give up a big chunk of their farm to not give up Lindell. This helps Calgary get a jump start, a jump start on the rebuild they desperately need. And that does make a lot of sense. I mean, for the Panthers, I think trading Lindell will be an absolute mistake, even though Kachuk would be a fantastic. Lindell is going to be one of their best players very, very soon, and already is such a great and underrated overall centerman. And I feel like this trade package is interesting for the Flames. Obviously, again, Horquist and Montour making the cap work, but Ward is correct. I mean, Horquist can still play in some spurts, and Montour it has been better in Florida, even though I'm a little bit under underwhelmed by his play at points. But you bring in Mackie Simmons 
Miskevich, and I think that's an underrated prospect pickup. Same as well for Evan Nas, who could be a solid bottom pair guy. And you get a first round pick in 2025 and a second round pick in 2023. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure uh, Florida has to trade the first in 2025 because they might have traded their 2024 pick. Actually, let me just check that. Yeah, so as per cap friendly, they don't have their 2023 first and they don't have their 2024 first. So they'll likely have to trade that 2025 first to make that happen, which might honestly be the biggest problem in a Kachuk to Florida deal. I feel like if the Calgary Flames are going to trade him, they want to get that first round pick and want to get it for a stacked 2023 draft. That might be the thing that kind of separates things and they might even need a player like Lindell or maybe even a Spencer Knight if they really want to go crazy with it if they're only going to get a first in 2025. But I feel like for the Flames, if you're wanting to play that long game, if you're wanting to go into full rebuild, there's worse options that you can go for. Sim Escavich is going to be great, though he is a little bit of a project. Same thing with Evan Nas. And if you are willing to wait, I think the 2025 first could pay dividends. I mean, who knows how good Florida is by then? And at that point, you could see a little bit of decline in their play, as well as a second round pick in 2023. It's not the worst thing in the world. It might not be the best package, but if they do end up taking it, I I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. As for the realistic meter, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Now, here's another interesting one, this time involving the Vancouver Canucks. And this one was kind of caught my eye from CT, and they proposed this. To Vancouver, Matthew Kachuk, and to Calgary, JT Miller and a conditional third round pick becomes a second if Miller doesn't re-sign. Explanation, the Canucks need to trade Miller, and getting Kachuk would be a nice way to do it. They throw in a pick because he's only got a year left on his deal. Now, here's the thing. I feel like for me personally, there is something to this deal, but I feel like Calgary only makes it if a JT Miller extension is in place immediately. I don't think they make this deal unless Miller shows interest and wants to stay in Calgary, but I do feel like if Calgary is going to bring in another centerman, JT Miller is the type of guy to do that with. You would have a top two center core offensively of JT Miller and Elias Lindholm, and then you could have Backlund as that solidified defensive third line centerman, and to me that would work pretty amazingly, and you combine that that with still some of the wingers they have there and I think JT Miller will be a fantastic addition but again I feel like Calgary only pulls the trigger on that deal especially compared to what they could get if they have that extension in place but it does make sense and again if Calgary wants to keep that timetable if they still want to be competitive a player like JT Miller and adding that for Kachuk would be the best option on the market. Also, we got another three-way trade here, this time from Luke FYB, who proposes a three-way trade between the Devils, Flames, and Anaheim Ducks. As for Luke's trade proposal, Devils get Matthew Kachuk, Flames get Severson, Holtz, a 2023 first rounder, top three protected, and the Ducks third rounder, and the Ducks get Tomas Tatar. Explanation, Tatar to Ducks because Ducks need to reach the cap floor and freeze up 4.5 million for the Devils. So there you go. And that is interesting to me because I feel like for the Devils potential offer, there's a lot of different options there. We've seen proposed the Jesper Brat being the best option. We've seen Alexander Holtz being the centerpiece potentially, and that is what we see in this offer. But you also get Damon Severson on top of that and a 2023 first rounder top three protected plus a Ducks third rounder on top of that and to me I think this trade is interesting and it and again it would really depend on what the Flames are thinking here do they want to bring in another top four defenseman do they feel like they need that into that pool and there's been a lot of conversation over whether they do bring in a top defenseman in a, in a Kachuk deal and I'm kind of on the fence about it but if you do bring Damon Severs and I think he would fit well in that system and Alexander Holtz is another interesting piece a player that I, I could see as being one of the better goal scorers in the league but has yet to take that next step officially and is a little bit of a risk there is of course the conversations of, be, of him being the next Alex Nylander for instance and that would definitely suck but if he does pan out he would be a great piece to add and then you get a 2023 first rounder which I think honestly considering it's the devil's first round pick even though it is top three protected i think mean, might be the best potential offer you get you get a top four defenseman you get a potential stud a goal scoring prospect and a first round pick for a team that even though they want to make the playoffs in a metro division that is the metro division and the eastern conference that is the eastern conference playoffs 
are by no means confirmed. And even though, again, that pick is top three protected, it could easily be like seventh overall or eighth overall. And you get a third round pick on top of that for an Anaheim team that will probably be about middle of the pack, if not lesser than that. And to me, I think for the Flames, sure, would you like to have a Jordan Cairo potentially, but maybe this could be one of the more realistic offers we see, especially with Severson maybe being out of the picture with them bringing in, of course, John Marino. So we'll see what the Flames end up going for, but if they do want to add a D-man, I think this trade makes a lot of sense, and I would give this trade an, maybe an 8 out of 10 in the realistic meter Now, Ali comes through with a few different trades, and we're just going to highlight the Stars and Calgary trade here. I have three different trades for the Stars, Devils, and Blues, and I believe these three teams can provide the best assets for my Flames, and Ali says this for the Dallas offer. Dallas receives Matthew Kachuk and Yuso Valimaki. In exchange, the Flames get Rupe Hintz, Essel Lindell, Wyatt Johnston, and a 2023 first round pick. And this one, I think, is really realistic and really interesting. To me, in a Matthew Kachuk to Dallas deal, Rupe Hintz has to be the main centerpiece. Essel Lindell, though, does make a lot of sense. And here's where I think a lot of people go wrong here, is that they trade both Hintz and Lindell without a defenseman coming back, which I don't think Dallas would do. Bringing in, though, both Matthew Kachuk and Yuso Valimaki, you could have Valimaki eventually maybe in the place of Lindell, or at least hope to have a defenseman in that spot, and that's where I think this trade is a lot more realistic. And, of course, you got Wyatt Johnston in a 2023 first-round pick. I do feel like it might not be Wyatt Johnston. I think it might be a player like Logan Stankoven or Maverick Bork instead, but I do feel like for Calgary, they would want a player like Johnston, but I feel like if you give up hints and Lindell, a top-tier a two-way centerman, and a pretty underrated defense defenseman, you might not have to give up both Johnston and a first-round pick. So I feel like if it was Hintz, Lindell, Bork in a 2023 first, that would be absolutely perfect. But honestly, it's a pretty realistic trade. I give it like a 9.5 out of 10. Pretty much perfect. Now going on to another potential trade, though, involving Nashville from Totally Tubular with that awesome UC Saros profile picture. They say to Nashville, could chuck a new fourth-round pick, and to the Calgary Flames, Tolvanen, Askarov, Granlund, a first-round pick, and a third round pick. Now, this is interesting to me because I feel like for the Preds, it kind of de it really depends on how both the Preds and the Flames view themselves because for the Preds, do they trade a scare off? Do they fully believe that Yuzi Saros will be the future, which they probably should? Do they believe that he will be the guy for the foreseeable decade and that a scare off will likely be out the books, out, out of the picture eventually? If that is how they feel, then I feel like trading a scare off in a potential Kachuk deal makes a lot of sense. For the Flames as well, you might say they already got Jacob Markstrom, but I feel like by the time that Jacob Markstrom really starts to show his age, Askarov will be right there and knocking on the door. He's still developing and he's still getting the, the, the kind of details in his game going. And I feel like by the time Askarov is truly ready for that position, Markstrom will probably have to be a tandem goalie at that point. And you bring in a top guy like that. And with the Preds already having Uzi Soros, it makes sense why they would want to offload Askarov. And that is a big piece to add. You also got Tolvan and Granlin, a first round pick and a third round pick and to me I think for Calgary the only issue here is that you don't get a bona fide forward prospect yes Iskarov is nice to have and if they do want to go for goaltending Iskarov is the best option out there for the future but I do feel like they might want to replace that with maybe a, a different prospect maybe they go for a player like Joaquin Kamel potentially instead but I do feel like for the Flames getting Tolvanen back is big Granlin is a big addition a first round pick for the Preds which again isn't confirmed to be a playoff team we'll see what happens there and a third round pick on top of that I'd give this realistic trade an 8 out of 10 on the realistic meter. And overall, it's not too bad whatsoever. And then going on to the last trade that caught my eye from Real Chicken with KFC profile picture. Don't go on with this one. This trade is just for fun, but I find it interesting. Toronto gets Matthew Kachuk and the Calgary Flames get Mitch Marner. As for the reasoning, Toronto gets help on the left side and adds a top six winger who can play his style, which could be fantastic for players like Matthews and Tavares. As for Calgary, you lose Kachuk, but you gain one of the most effective dynamic wingers in the NHL. Toronto has not been doing anything in the playoffs and needs to switch it up. Now, this trade to me was interesting because even though Real Chicken says it's just for fun, I feel like there is 
maybe it's just a little bit of merit to this even though it's really unrealistic that a, that gms would actually make a trade this big if you forget that i feel like this could honestly solve a few issues for both teams for toronto bringing in matthew kachuk that is absolutely perfect that is exactly the player i mean they need to have they need to have in that that top line and they need to have in the playoffs and i feel like kachuk would fit beautifully alongside a player like austin matthews it would be amazing and even though mitch martin already does i feel like for that long-term gain it does make sense too if kachuk wants to get nine nine point five million let's just say he forgets about the the again the tax in, in canada and everything if he does just want nine point five million on the dot I think I'd rather have Matthew Chuck at that number than maybe Mitch Marner at, at the cap pit he's already at. And you save a little bit of money there by bringing in Kachuk if he signs of that number. And to me, he might be a better fit for what Toronto needs long term. As for the Calgary Flames, it might be one of those situations where let's say this trade is proposed by the Calgary Flames. Let's say that or let's say this trade is proposed by the Toronto Maple Leafs. If you're at Calgary, how many more offers are you going to get that are better than just Mitch Marner by itself? One of the best, most prolific, dynamic offensive players, as Real Chicken says. And to me, I feel like he's signed long term. You got you got still an okay cap hit there for what he's able to provide uh, at a regular season rate. And alongside Elias Lindholm, you know he can work with super talented centers and really come out the other side amazingly. To me, if I'm Calgary, I mean, how again, how many other offers give you better? better than what Mitch Marner can provide and especially if the Flames still want to compete getting Mitch Marner for Matthew Kachuk would be one of the best options out there if not the best option available now on the realistic meter I give it like a 2 out of 10 because it's never going to happen because of the NHL but it is definitely fun to think about but let me know in the comments down below what you guys think of all these mock trades which do you think were the mo most realistic and what were would be your realistic mock trades for Matthew Kachuk let us know in the comments down below of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell comment down below all your thoughts share this video with your friends get the map you can chuck mock trades out there and click on this card for all of my hockey trading room content right one playlist my name is nathan have a great day and i'll see you in the next one goodbye